Hey, Angry Welshman back again. Well, this is another Level Earth Observer video, as you can tell, but it's on the coronavirus. Right. Now, this nurse here, I'm not going to play too much of the video. This nurse speaks at a, apparently, a city here called Raleigh in North Carolina on the 28th of April. Right, so about a week or so ago. And she states that, you know, her hospital at the minute is running at 60% capacity and the hospital is only running at the, um, no, a hospital is running at 60% capacity at the minute, but can run at like 130 or something percent capacity. And that the ward that they've um, opened specifically for the coronavirus is never full and there's always tons of space and all that kind of stuff, right? And apparently they've had to shut off loads of floors and how she's been asked, do you want to take this day off and this day off? And the fact that the waiting rooms where people usually have to wait, you know, for morning, you know, for tens of hours to uh, to see people are actually getting seen straight away. Well, that's probably because a lot of people have always stayed at home, so they're not sort of, you know, pushing stuff. And I guarantee you to take the weight off the coronavirus section, they've probably got staff, loads of stuff specifically for the waiting room areas so just to get people seen and out right and you know just to say this i get it and she talks about the you know the media lying to you like well my aspect of it is this why would the government do this to their own economy it makes no sense right it makes very little sense at all and like i get it the media and the news can be absolute fear-mongering you know cunt bags right I get it. Like, I was in Costa Rica once, where, and this is my sort of knowledge on the, um, uh, this is my knowledge on the American media, and there's always been jokes about the American media and how they run things, right? A uh, hell of a lot different to the news in this country. This country, like, news, like the BBC, yeah, you don't trust the BBC as far as you can throw, like, you know, a, a one-ton stone. However, you know, they like to calm the public, just, you know, we're working on it. Just stay calm, stay at home, blah, blah. America does things a little few differently. Like, I was in Costa Rica once, and I I think I was sitting in bed, and this is when ISIS was at its peak. And the way they were talking about it over, like, CNN or Fox or whatever, I can't remember what it was, it was almost like ISIS had already invaded America and, like, already taken over several cities. It was ridiculous. Then, but a week later, I came home, barely a mention of ISIS, nothing in the UK, absolutely nothing. Just a news bulletin about what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, the um, more than anything, I probably understand that the media, the media in America probably likes to, they are making it out to be a hell of a lot worse than it actually is, and they're almost making people more worried than they need to be, you know. And I also get it from a worker standpoint. I get it. People are pissed. People are upset. You know, people need to pay bills. People need work. And I, I get it, you know, about in that for that side of it. People want to go back to work, you know, and that's, you know, that's just an unfortunate side effect of what's going on. I hope things get sorted out eventually. Right. But she talks about Raleigh, which is a city in North Carolina. And she talks about how hospital beds and all this kind of thing aren't full to capacity, blah, blah, blah. Media's lying to you, blah, blah. Right, so let's have a look at Raleigh. Right, Raleigh. Raleigh is in North Carolina. As you can tell, North Carolina is quite a large state in America. Right? It's quite a large state. There's South Carolina down here, so that's made it easier for me to detect it like what's from South of North Carolina. Right? Let's have a look at the map, right? So the map so far is 69, 68,000 deaths, right? New York seems to be the most worst hit at the minute with 24,694. Well, let's find North Carolina. North Carolina at the minute has got 11,971 cases with 442 deaths, right? Okay, well, let's think this up another way. So 11,990... 11,971 in all of North Carolina, with 442 deaths. Well, let's park this up another way. What's the population of North Carolina? Well, the population of North Carolina is 10.5 million. And to put that into perspective, the country which I live, of Wales, is at a 
population of about three. And that puts it into structure how big the states of America are. Okay? Well, let's run this down another way. Let's have a look. How many cities are there in North Carolina? Well, the North Carolina is about is the ten largest, even though it has twelve on here. And Raleigh is the second largest. Right? Well, what's the population of Raleigh? Well, the population of Raleigh is 481,958. Now, when you look at the map, right, North Carolina only has 11,971 cases in all of North Carolina. Right, that's 11,000, let's just say 12,000, let's run it up, 12,000 makes it easier. Right, and that's 12,000, right, in a, in a um, and this city has 481,000. Um, let's say 482,000 of population. Now the population of, of North Carolina itself is 10.5, so that's not... A great deal at all when you think about it right well let's go to the coronavirus now this is Wake County where it has 788 confirmed coronavirus cases with just 16 deaths now 788 in Wake County right let's put this in 788 coronavirus cases in West County in um, Wake County well Wake County this is quite large has all these areas in it here okay well, so what's the population of Wake County? Well, the population of Wake County is 1.112 million. So when you actually consider the fact that there's only 788 confirmed cases and 16 deaths, so only 700 in a, in a county with 1.12 million uh, in population, that's not a great deal either. Well, let's have a look at this another way. How many main hospitals are there in Wake County? Well, it says here four. So these are probably the four largest, I'm guessing. And but it says you're like Wake County um fourteen. So these are like uh Wake Med Kerry Hospitals. There's a lot of hospitals, but these are probably you know, these four are probably the biggest. And then you go let's say hospitals in downtown Raleigh, like you stated earlier. Well there seems to be three Duke Hospital, Diplomat Health Center and Vera hospitals, which I would say these are quite large hospitals for populations like this. When you consider that there's only 788 confirmed cases in Wake County, and Wake County has a population um, of 1.12 million, and but then you go back to like what you call it, you know, the units in where they're dealing with the coronavirus are not going to be that full. You know, so this whole notion that they're lying to you is lying about what? It's quite clear that your state isn't actually that badly affected. You know, so perhaps your state can probably lift a certain, uh, you know, regulations and restrictions at some point. OK, so I don't again, it's lying about what? It's clear that your state and your city aren't that badly affected considering which is a godsend in many respects, all right? But here's the thing, this is my understanding, right? They're still, and she's still in the watch call, and she still goes on about it, that she's had worse moments in the hospital um, on flu, right? But that's not the point, right? Yeah, coronavirus death toll throughout the whole year is not as bad as flu. But this is the thing, this is a, the COVID-19 is a virus at this present minute that we know very little about right flu at this present minute um s flu tends to only kill the very elderly right coronavirus at this present minute seems to affect anyone from the ranges of 40 upwards and it has killed people younger than that and it's a and coronavirus seems to be a form of um uh, pneumonia essentially that doesn't respond to pneumonia treatments whatsoever and i'm not getting into the 5g crap because that's just utter bull crap but it's not responding to any sort of you know um pneumonia treatment whatsoever or flu treatment this is the thing if we hadn't gone on lockdown and we hadn't basically done the proper you know the precautions that we did we could have been looking at 10 times the number of deaths at this present minute 
then I wonder if you'd start panicking then. Alright? So yeah, does the news spring it out of proportion slightly? Perhaps. But it's still a problem, and people need to understand this. And those Americans in the theater, in you know, you see in videos going, we need to open the barber shops, oh, for good grief. And there was a neighbor um, next door, which I try not to get into an argument with him. He's like, oh, I'm not allowing them to vaccinate my daughter. I'll get, I'll, um, he said, oh, I'll, they'll have to shoot me before I let them <laughs> vaccinate my daughter. And he says, that, you know, and he says all these things about like, oh, it's about time that people stood up and stood up to the government and all this kind of thing and whatever. Else. So, yeah, those type of people are everywhere. But this is the thing about, this is something else I'm going to get on, about the government and about establishment, right? Yeah, our government is corrupt. It's full of shit. We know this. Governments all around the world, it's the way they, it's, a, it's the way life has been since the dawn of civilization, since, like, democracy and things was a thing. Right, this is nothing new, this is nothing that you smart ass conspiracy theorists seem to be the one that have figured out. This is we always known this, right? But the simple fact of the matter is it doesn't matter how corrupt the government is, we need them. Right? Without government, without establishment, without rules and regulations and laws, society can't function. Simple as. Society would crumble overnight. So no matter how shit the world is at the minute, I've just learned to accept this is the way the world is. Yes, I'll stand up for things that I believe in, and yes, I will go out there and, you know, complain to the government that these sort of legislations need to be picked. What happens now if we overthrow everyone in the government? Like, the entire world, America, Britain, we all storm bloody Parliament or Congress or the White House, we kill bloody all of, you know, uh, the higher-ups, and then we start a new one. Right, well, who's to say, how long is that going to last? How long are, um, are those new individuals going to keep up with what the world needs? When are they out of stress going to go, you know what, I deserve a bit of a higher paycheck here, so he's going to sneakily give himself some more funds. You know, and what happens when all government do that? And then they're going to pull funds to things, projects that they want done first before others. You know, running, the, running, the country, running a country isn't easy. I'm not sure if you've noticed. You know, and you know, and then eventually, we're, with a new sort of government, things will go straight back to the way they were before. It's happened in Russia. Russia's overthrown the governing body and the governing party so many times it's laughable, and it always seems to go back to fucking square one. You know, so just in my say, just deal with it. You know, because trust me, it's it's either going to be one of these things where all-out civil war is going to break out at some point, and there's going to be civil unrest. Well, it's been working its way towards that for a long time. But, oh, honestly, the world's, the world's fucking full of shit, isn't it? But, oh well. All right, then. Hope everyone is keeping safe and staying home and doing what they can. Keep safe and hope to see you all soon. Goodbye.